Hello, hi, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. Hope everything's going well. Today I'm going to be doing the questions in the mid year book freakout tag. I've seen quite a few other YouTubers do this, and I am, uh, I think the questions are really good. I think they're really interesting, so I'm going to do that as well. I do also want to do a mid year wrap up where I just go over my stats so far for the year and my five star reads and my one star reads. Do I have any one stars? I think I have at least, I have at least one. I'll do that at the end of the month, but this is the mid year book freakout tag. Mm -hmm. Okay, question one, best book you've read so far this year? All right, so I've read quite a few, I've read some really good books this year, and I have four, I think, five-star reads so far this year. And five-star reads for me are like books that I think that I could recommend to almost anyone, books that I think everyone should probably read. Uh, so once it gets to that point where it's like I've given it a five-star rating, it's it's kind of hard for me to pick favorites from there. Like I've, I've always had trouble with that with everything. Like I can't pick a favorite artist, I can't pick a favorite book. Um, so, so right off the bat, we're not off to a good start. Um, but I would say that my favorite book so far this year is a tie between uh, Project Hail Mary and so, like I said, a tie between Project Hail Mary and uh, The Stand. So Project Hail Mary was, uh, I mean, I loved The Martian as well, and Project Hail Mary kind of kicked it up a notch in my opinion. I mean, both were really great. But Project Hail Mary is like the sci-fi book for people who don't like sci-fi. And I think even whether you're a sci-fi fan or whether you're not a huge sci-fi fan, it's just a really well-written story. It's got a great narrative. It's got a couple of great characters that are easy to follow. It's, uh, it's a topic that I think is really interesting and would be interesting to a lot of people. Project Hail Mary was just, it was great. It was an awesome, awesome sci-fi book. Uh, the Stand is like, one of the most epic works of standalone fiction I've ever read. Um, and I just, I think, and this might be some like confirmation bias talking because I made a whole video about the stand. So I, I maybe spent a lot more time thinking about it where my review on Project Hail Mary was maybe five minutes long. I, I didn't talk about it for super long after I finished it, even though I loved it. Uh, yeah, I, I talked about the stand for a really long time. So, so maybe it's just, just that kind of bleeding through, but I think I'm gonna have to go with the stand as my favorite book so far of 2022. Okay, question two, best sequel you've read so far in 2022? Uh, have I read, I've, the only sequel that I can think of that I've actually read off the bat is The Great Hunt. Let me see if I've read any other sequels. No, I mean graphic novels, I've read like more installments of graphic novels, but I don't know if that really counts. As a sequel, so I think the proper sequel, I'm, I'm gonna have to choose The Great Hunt. There's really not any other option. So, uh, so The Great Hunt is the second book in the Wheel of Time series. Made a whole video about it that I put out last week. Uh, it's a good pick, at least, for a sequel because even though it's kind of the only option, <laughs> um, because it was really, really good. I gave it a 4.75. Ultimately, it was it was awesome. It was an awesome book. So, uh, so yeah, not a lot to choose from there, but at least we had. Oh my gosh, what is happening with these sleeves here? What's happening with these sleeves? Um, so not a, a lot to choose from there, but I did really enjoy The Great Hunt. So, um, so yeah, that's that's that one. Okay, question three: New releases that you haven't read yet, but you want to. Okay, um, there's a few here. So, let me see. First of all, there's uh, kind of a stigma, I think, against romance reading, and I do enjoy a good romance novel from time to time. They don't usually end up being favorites for me, unless we're talking like Sally Rooney, because I love her, but I don't know if that's more like contemporary fiction than it is romance. Uh, anyway, I do want to give Emily Henry a try, and she just put out Book Lovers, which everybody's talking about. You don't need me to talk about Book Lovers. So if I'm going to give a romance author a try, then I would probably give Emily Henry a try, and I would pick up People We Meet on Vacation, or um, uh, book lovers. So another one is a magic steeped in poison, which is a new world. Let me check who the author is on that. Um, Judy Judy Lynn. Um, a magic steeped in poison. I think it's supposed to be the first in a series. First one was released this year, and it's this whole. I've heard nothing but really great things about it. Whole magic system, whole fantasy world based on tea. So people drink tea, and then that's how they get their magic powers, and I just, it's really cool, really interesting idea. So absolutely love that, and I've heard really good things about it, so I do want to read that as well. 
Then we have Kai Kaye. Kai, I have no idea how to say it. I'm sorry. Kai Kai Kaye. I think it's Kai Kaye by Vishnavi Patel. Um, and this one is a new release fantasy novel of this year, but it's fantasy that is not steeped in traditional Western fantasy that you see done time and time again. Most fantasy is based on European um, standards or European types of fairy tales. And this one is set in India, I believe. Um, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baltry. So I saw this before everybody was talking about it, I did see it. I saw it before it was cool. I don't mean it like that. But I saw it and I was like, oh, well, I mean, if I like, if it gets some momentum and I see some people leaving good reviews, then maybe I'll want to pick it up, but it doesn't really sound like my cup of tea. Um, but the more I think about it, the more I've seen other people review it. This just like slice of life. Like I just love slice of life manga and I love some of those slice of life stories that you see in other genres sometimes. So I was like, well, why wouldn't I like a slice of life fantasy series that's just kind of slow paced? I think it's a really cute idea. So um, so I think I'm pretty sold on that one as well. I do want to read Legends and Lattes. All right, question four, question four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So here's the thing. I don't really keep up with new releases, which sounds silly because there's I just named like five new releases that I do want to read, but those are kind of new releases that I hear about after the fact. I don't really keep up with what authors are going to release until they're out, until other people are talking about them. I get a lot of my content from, um, you know, I get a lot of my book reviews from booktube and from Instagram, so, uh, so I don't really see the books until they're out typically. But one book, one author that I do tend to keep up with, and this is a book that I've been waiting to read for the last almost a year now, I feel like. I don't know how long it's been, but, uh, but I will be getting this as soon as I possibly can. That's Upgrade by Blake Crouch. So really, really excited for this one. I've absolutely loved all of his new stuff. I haven't read his old stuff. I've heard that it's not that great, but as far as his new stuff is concerned, Dark Matter and Recursion both just, they're, they're, they've made Blake Crouch an auto read, auto buy author for me. So um, I'm just really, really excited for Upgrade. I hope it's as good as the last two that he has written. Uh, yeah, yeah, super excited for that one. All right, question five, your biggest disappointment of the year. This one is probably, it's gonna be a book that I read just when I was starting out on booktube. So this was back in February. Um, Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. So Colson Whitehead is a fantastic author. I think The Nickel Boys is one of my all-time favorite books. I've talked about this already. I absolutely loved it. So the fact that Harlem Shuffle was so disappointing and really just did not give me anything at all. I was struggling to get through it. And honestly, if it hadn't been Colson Whitehead, I would have DNF'd it, most likely. I ended up giving it like a two, one and a half or a two, some, somewhere around there, but I really did not enjoy it. Could, didn't connect with it at all. So just knowing that I had you know, those really big ones that I really enjoyed or thought I was gonna enjoy in my back pocket. Um, Harlem Shuffle was just just not it for me. So yeah, pretty big disappointment there. Question six, your biggest surprise. Um, biggest surprise. So I'm gonna go with a recent one, actually. The biggest surprise, this kind of also falls into the category of disappointment, so maybe it's surprise in a bad way. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, and I still did like this book. I want to just preface with that. I did like this book, uh, but I did not love Transcendent Kingdom by Yagasai, and I thought that this was going to be like an automatic love for me, especially considering that Homegoing was my favorite book of last year. Um, Yagasai is, I think she's really talented, and I think she's got a great voice, and I think she has a lot of important things to say. And I can tell, I can really tell that she was going for another big overarching grand message with Transcendent Kingdom and it just didn't hit me the same way that Homegoing did. The scale of, of Homegoing is pretty massive for it being a small book and this is this is a really small book. Both of her books are relatively small. I think Homegoing is a little bit longer um, but Homegoing for it being so short tells an absolutely massive story that uh, is just heartbreaking and beautiful and hopeful and sad and she just weaves in so many different elements of what it means to be human and especially what it means to be a human who is descended from um, black slaves in 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 america uh, so it's it's just a really 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 great book i 
can't say that enough. I, I, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm stumbling over my words. Transcendent Kingdom, I think, wanted to be on a similar scale, but it just wasn't for me. I thought the characters were just kind of flat. I uh, didn't feel like they were real people. I felt like I felt like the characters were symbols, but they also should have been real people. Um, so there was just some kind of a disconnect there for me. Ultimately, I did like it, but I did not love it. I think I gave this like a 3.25. Uh, so I was surprised, just considering how profound Homegoing was, that this wasn't a favorite for me. It was just a, yeah, this was, this was fine. This was okay. Favorite new author debut or new to you? Um, all right. So my favorite new author, I don't know that I've read many brand new authors this year. Um, like authors who have never written before. But new to me would probably be Leigh Bardugo, who wrote the Grishaverse trilogy as well as the Six of Crows duology, and I've read so far just the Six of Crows duology, uh, but I loved the Six of Crows duology, so I will definitely be picking up Shadow and Bone. I hope that it's, you know, at least halfway decent as much as uh, the Six of Crows duology was. I've heard that it's not as good, but um, but I just, I love the world. I love the whole Grishaverse and the whole world that Lee Bardugo has built, so so I think that might have to be a favorite for me. My, like, my tie for that would probably be Robert Jordan right now, and I have a feeling that if I continue to like the Wheel of Time series as much as I like the second book, that Robert Jordan would overtake that spot. Um, but for now, I am putting Lee Bardugo in that spot, so. Alright, question A, newest fictional crush. Uh, let me think about this. This is gonna be funny because I have two and they are both bisexual men. Uh, so my first one would probably be Nick from Heartstopper. He is just a sweetheart. I think everyone needs a Nick in their lives. Uh, Charlie, fictional Charlie, is just so lucky to have Nick and um, I, I would do anything for him. I, I love him. Um, but that's really sounds like me fangirling and bag bandwagoning because everybody's talking about Heartstopper, but it truly is. If you haven't read it, it's, it's truly just, it's a palate cleanser. It, it'll make you smile. It's a wonderful, wonderful little series. So, so Nick is there and my other one might be Jesper. Jesper from, um, the Six of Crows duology and the, in the whole Grishaverse. Uh, so I, I really like Jesper. I don't know what it is about, um, a gambling addict with a heart of gold. I, I guess I, I like that. I love those damaged characters. I do, but Jesper is kind of a sweetheart at heart. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I do really like Jesper as well. All right. Question nine, newest favorite character. Um, my newest favorite character all around, this one's actually, I'm um, going to be easy. I'm just going to go with my gut for this one. And that's Nynaeve from the wheel of time. Um, anytime that there is that much growth and turnaround for a character for me, they instantly kind of become a favorite. And I hated Nynaeve in The Eye of the World. I thought she was so annoying. I thought that she was pretty bland and dull and just kind of there to be the, uh, the, the woman who has to ruin everything or the woman who has to like be the stern woman in the series. <laughs> and so yeah, she just really annoyed me. In The Great Hunt, she kind of takes on a whole new role and um, she has to go through so much to get to the point where she is at the end of the book without spoilers at all. Uh, there's a scene where she has to go through some trials, um, literal trials, with uh, the magic school that she's in, and I, it breaks my heart and um, just really gives a lot of insight into who she is as a person. I think that she's super strong. Uh, yeah, she just transformed for me in the second Wheel of Time book, so I am a huge fan of Nynaeve. I think she's my favorite character at the moment. A uh, book that made you cry. I have a few. If a book makes me tear up, then that's not like a huge achievement because I usually cry. You know what I've noticed? I actually cry. This is kind of a tangent, but whenever a book ends, even if it's like a book I didn't like that much, or even if it's like happy ending or, you know, like it doesn't matter. But if a book ends and I like turn the last page, I kind of tear up a little bit. Like I just get sad every time I finish a book for a brief moment. Oh, that's just so funny. But anyway, that's besides the point. A book that actually like made me properly cry, um, like ugly cry, probably The Green Mile. Um, I think, oh, do I have that one? So The Green Mile, the ending of The Green Mile is just totally heartbreaking. Um, I'm tearing up a little bit thinking about it right now. So yeah, but yeah, really, really good. If you're not a fan of horror, if you're not a fan of Stephen King, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You should read this. It's it's kind of horror-y in some ways, but only in the sense of 
like exploring the psyches of some humans and it's not super super I mean it's kind of supernatural but in a way that is is more magical realism than it is anything else the ending is just heartbreaking it's uh yeah yeah this made me cry for sure I opposite them the book that made you happy um, I could go with Heartstopper very easily. I could go with Heartstopper and because that made me happy, but that does feel like kind of a default response, especially since we were just talking about Heartstopper. So let me think if there's anything else. Helium. Helium by Rudy Francisco. This is a poetry collection. I don't read a whole lot of poetry. Uh, I find poetry to be pretty intimidating a lot of the time. This book in particular is a very easy to read collection of poems. I, I do like it and I, I realized I think partially from reading this book. I like it when my poetry is it's it's got double meaning but not beyond that like the message is kind of easy to interpret the metaphors are there but they're not like you know layered and upon layered and uh, yeah it just has some really beautiful messages in it and I think they're they're just really great poems. Uh, that's a book that I definitely want to get my own physical copy of. So number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. Um, I don't, I don't buy a whole lot of books or I haven't been buying a whole lot of books because I'm supposed to be moving. I was supposed to be moving a few months ago, but that's a long story. Anyway, so I was trying to kind of clear out my books more than buy. And then when I got sad, I started buying books again, um, of course. So, but a lot of the books that I have bought are mass market paperbacks. So let me see, let me see. Okay, I have two. Um, so it would be a tie between this little discount copy of Weathering Heights that I bought. I just, I love the, the foiling on it. I love the edges. I love that it's kind of like velvety feeling. So it's like, it's hardcover, but it's also not hardcover. It's cause it's, I guess it's, it's that like, that kind of cross between. Um, it's not super special, but I like the green on it, and I like that there's also a blue ribbon in the middle of it. I, I'm a sucker for uh, for books with with ribbons, so um, so yeah, so that one, or I would also say the Book of Hope, um, which looks ugly. So sorry, it's just a picture of, of Jane Goodall's uh, face. But if you take the um, jacket off, then um, the Book of Hope looks like that and I think that's really cute and adorable and it's that that way on the back as well and it's got this kind of nice um it's got, got a nice feeling to it and I just like these like floral edges on books I guess so um so tie between these these two I, I like both of them okay last question last question stop let's stop playing with the stuff um so 13 what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Okay, uh, so I want to continue the Wheel of Time series. Want to do one of those a month. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, right now it's highly dependent on when the holds come in from the library. I also want to read, so I read the Iliad earlier this year, finished it by reading a chapter a day. Love doing that, would highly recommend. If you're intimidated by it, just do a chapter a day. It'll be fine. Um, and I do want to read the Odyssey this year as well, so hope to get to that. And then I picked this up a couple of months ago, but I have yet to read it. I, it's actually going to be probably the end of this month for me, so just in a few days I'll start it. Um, but The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, hoping to get this one done quickly as well, so that's that. And then lastly, I've got a few books that I, I want to clear out some of the books that have been on my TBR for a really long time. Uh, that I've just not gotten around to. So I've got a couple of classics. Um, I do want to read Flowers for Algernon this year, and that one is super, super small. So, so I just need to pick it up and do it. Um, the Picture of Dorian Gray is the other classic that I want to read this year. So, so a few classics. And then actually the book that has been on my TBR the longest is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. So that is one that I want to also get to this year. So, so a few, a few there. All right, that is all the questions for the mid-year book freakout tag. Super fun. I loved doing this. Um, I will leave all of the questions in the description below. Feel free to answer them yourself. 
Uh, I would love to read them in the comments. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, those links are in the description, as well as my Goodreads and my StoryGraph accounts. So, um, so click the links down there to follow me on there. I think that is enough self-promotion for this video, so I will go ahead and leave you there, but I hope that you are having a great day, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!